Good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you, Joe and Francesco, for actually uh, setting this session up. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, percolation analysis and the deep history of regionality. So I'll just give you a brief recap on percolation. I did give a presentation on percolation analysis at uh, this conference last year in Tübingen. I'm then going to talk a little bit about its application to uh, probing deep history. And then I'm going to uh, conclude with some new work that we've done on percolation analysis called the connection coefficient. And I'll explain that as we go. So percolation analysis is uh, a, a, a modern way or a, a, a recent way that we've started working with for looking for patterns in spatial, uh, in spatial arrangements. Uh, and this is uh, part of a long tradition. Um, so going back to the, um, the 1930s, we've got work that uh, Fox was doing looking at uh, hill forts in Britain. And he's tried to categorize these in that particular instance on the basis of the type of entrance that they have, a feature. Uh, more recently, Hogg in uh, the 1970s was looking at hill forts in, uh, in Wales and arranging those on the basis of, of size and so forth. Uh, you know, seeking, seeking out patterns, seeking out groups and clusters. And what I've been doing um, over the past uh, few years is looking at hill forts in Britain as well. So the method that we're using, just as a brief, brief recap, is a continuum method. We are looking uh, at clusters uh, that are formed based on the distance between points. Uh, earlier methods are based on a, 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 a cellular array or a grid or a matrix, um, but the continuum method works on, on precisely the distance between points rather than a grid array. As I presented last year, uh, that was implemented in R, but now we have a solution which has been implemented in GRASS GIS. And one of the, mo the drivers for that, and I can talk about that uh, offline in more detail, is to generate some more data, some more outputs, and in particular connection coefficient. This is very much a progress report, an update, it's, it's work in progress. So looking at, um, at uh, the GRASS solution and the, the case study I'll present in a moment, there are about 3,000 data points spread over, over the British Isles. And um, we're stepping through a percolation radius, that is the threshold distance between points of between zero and 40 kilometers in one kilometer increments. And what that additional information is gonna show us is how those clusters form. Very brief, brief recap, this is the, uh, the data that I'm using. This is the Atlas of Hillforts project, uh, which Gary, Gary Locke has been a key mover and driver for. Fantastic data set. So looking at um, some metrics here, we have two measures, one of which is the number of clusters uh, for the percolation radius. And this here is the maximum cluster size against radius. And you'll see that this progress is, there are some interesting transition points. So if we step through, this is at three kilometers. Um, the, the coding here is, um, is red, is the largest, blue, the second, and so forth. So just for clarity, we're picking out the top 15 clusters. And you can see that there's a, a large number of clusters here. Of course, at, at zero, there are no clusters because they're all individual points. If we step on through four kilometers, we can see uh, that cluster is beginning to grow. And we've got some other clusters appearing down here in, in, in Wales um, and, 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 and so on. So stepping through six kilometers, we're getting interesting things happening happening here down in, in Wales and, and we're walking on through um, by the time we're getting to nine kilometers then some of these clusters are getting quite quite substantial um, and we can carry on through at these uh, various different transition points and uh, at, uh, at 34 kilometers we've got virtually the whole of Britain in two clusters and that next step takes us into, into uh, it, it pretty much embraces everything apart from a few islands. So just how, when these, when we see some of these clusters merging, 
So we see some of these formation of some of these bigger clusters. What we're interested in, one of the things that we're interested in is the, the, the specific sites that are key in the formation of those. And we want to pick those out and see if we can understand better um, something about them. I'll come back to that in a minute. If we go to some deep history now, there's two case studies I'm looking at. One of them is the hill forts, and the other one is uh, doomsday bills uh, in Britain. So looking at uh, some clusters here of hill forts, and um, this is at a 10 kilometer radius, and these are overlaid on the county boundaries that were defined in the doomsday survey of 1086. Just as a very brief recap, if you're not aware, doomsday, was a survey conducted by William the Conqueror, the last successful conquest of Britain or England. And uh, he conducted a survey which gives you a remarkable snapshot of England in that, in that year. So it's a, it's a very particular time. But what we can see is that we've got some quite interesting matches between these uh, clusters of hill courts um, and, and the county boundaries which suggests that what we are seeing is uh, uh, the hill forts have been constructed with some sort of spatial uh, integrity there, perhaps reflecting some sort of socio-political entity which has been reflected uh, over a thousand years later uh, in, in county boundaries. Another recent, uh, a recent study, which was in 2015, is uh, a study done at Oxford on the uh, genetics of modern Britain. I won't go into that too much uh, detail, but um, this definitely showed up distinct genetic variants. I mean, not huge <laughs> variants we're talking about, but definite distinct variants in different parts of, of Britain. And just to highlight that here, we've got Cornwall and Devon, and we've got those clusters forming there. So there's, there's some interesting things going on in deep history, and our clustering mechanism is highlighting those and pointing them out for more uh, investigation. So looking at Doomsday Bills, um, we've got a much bigger data set here, nearly 13,000 points, and because they're much denser, we're looking at a much more fine-grained clustering, so we're going in 0.1 kilometer increments, Nothing much seems to be interesting happened at 2.3, but if we go at 3.2 kilometers, then we're definitely picking out um, clusters that match into uh, county boundaries. And also, interestingly, what we're seeing is a reflection of early medieval uh, uh, kingdoms there as well. So again, our clustering is picking out stuff for interesting investigation. Now, I mentioned one of the um, the things that we are particularly interested in is the role of individual sites. These are statistical packages, this is statistics. From the statistical point of view, those points, are uh, those nodes, those sites, are indistinguishable. But of course, from an archaeological point of view, that is very far from the case. We are very interested in those individual sites and what, they, uh, and what their, uh, their functions are. So in particular, we're interested in sites around the edge of clusters. Are they marginal or are they key? And how those individual sites link clusters. And the module that we've developed um, provides additional information for that. And we've developed a connection coefficient that gives a measure of the uh, connectivity of sites as those clusters grow. So just to briefly summarize, you know, two individual points, not particularly interesting. An individual point uh, to a cluster, not particularly interesting. But if we've got two large sites uh, coming together, then the points that link them together then are potentially much more interesting. Now, just some points on that. It's very much a work in progress. It's not an actually scaling parameter, and we're still working out how best to apply it, but it is generating some interesting results. So if I look at the clusters of uh, hill forts at uh, 10 kilometers, what I've plotted there in those circles are the um, sites of maximum connection co connectivity um, and uh, uh, for that, the top 15 clusters. So if we just remove the other ones, 
it's highlighting some sites that we should, can go and look at in investigating more detail. And if we close in on that area, in the lower part of the Seven Valley, um, close to the borders of England and Wales, um, and pit that out, then we've got here plotted on a GIS, we've got three clusters at 10 kilometers in red, green, and blue. And if we look at the maximum connection coefficient of sites in there, we've got some ranking so that the uh, sites in red, highlighted in red, are the largest. That's the next one down. And then we picked out some of the, uh, the scaling ones. So if we then step up the uh, population radius to join all those clusters together, and if we then strip out and just look at those sites with the maximum connection coefficient, it's a pattern of points, okay? Uh, all right, we've got some coastline in there. So, but if we put a <clears throat> topographical overlay in there, a DEM, then it brings the whole thing to life. <clears throat> and what we've got here is a whole set of sites, a lot of which are sitting on the escarpment looking out over the uh, Seven Valley. Uh, this is the Cotswolds, and we've got sites up here in uh, parts of Gloucestershire and Herefordshire. But our two sites <clears throat> are sitting down in the, in the valley. So if we put rivers on there, again, this begins to look really interesting. One of our key sites is right on the conjunction of the Seven and the Avon rivers. So this is beginning to look as though our parameters picked out something of quite interest there. If we then put on the Doomsday County boundaries, quite complicated, reflecting land ownership patterns at the time, we see that this county boundary here actually includes that site. These are in two separate counties, and that is a thousand years ago. If we look at modern county boundaries, we see that that site is still included in, uh, in, in a distinct county. Something interesting potentially going on here. So if we zoom in on this particular site, uh, in a little bit more uh, detail, we can see that it is lying between the confluence of two rivers, which is quite interesting because that, that county boundary is actually including this peninsula. And if we look at it in the um, uh, Hill Forts Atlas, we zoom in on that, we find that this site is Tobury Hill Fort. It's situated extremely close to the River Seven, which is a major navigable uh, thoroughfare in, in prehistory. But interestingly enough, we've got a motorway going right next to it. And that motorway is actually one of the oldest motorways in Britain. So our connection parameter, it's a statistic, it's picked out a particular site, but it's, it's suggesting that this site is actually something of great interest and of potentially great importance in uh, prehistory. So just in summary, our continuum percolation has great potential for revealing patterns uh, and spatial distribution, um, which is allowing us to investigate historic and prehistoric groupings and territories, which are enabling us to probe into deep history. And as I said last year, and I'll say it again, it's a tool of great potential in archeological spatial analysis. So many thanks to the various people who provided those data sets that we've used. And uh, thank you very much indeed.